The concept of the supernatural proposes that something cannot be explained by scientific understanding or the laws of nature. Examples often include characteristics of or relating to entities and concepts such as ghosts, angels, gods, souls and spirits, non-material beings, or anything else considered beyond nature like magic or miracles. Over time, things once thought to be supernatural such as lightning, seasons, and human senses have been shown to have entirely naturalistic explanations and origins. Physicalists believe that which is considered supernatural can be discovered to be completely physical and natural. Those who believe only the physical world exists are called naturalists. Those who believe similarly often maintain skeptical attitudes and beliefs concerning supernatural concepts. Belief in the supernatural can also occur in secular contexts. The supernatural is featured in paranormal, occult, and religious contexts. However, belief in the supernatural can also occur in secular contexts as well. Topic: <inaudible> Etymology. <inaudible> 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 Occurring as both an adjective and a noun, descendants of the modern English compound supernatural enters the language from two sources, by way of Middle French and directly from the Middle French's terms ancestor, post-classical Latin supernaturalis. Post-classical Latin supernaturalis first occurs in the 6th century, composed of the Latin prefix super and naturalis see nature. The earliest known appearance of the word in the English language occurs in a Middle English translation of Catherine of Siena's dialogue Orchard of Sion, around 1425, a how not an e supernaturel light ne e lit of cunning, because a v understood in it not, the semantic value of the term has shifted over the history of its use. Originally the term referred exclusively to Christian understandings of the world. For example, as an adjective, the term can mean belonging to a realm or system that transcends nature, as that of divine, magical, or ghostly beings, attributed to or thought to reveal some force beyond scientific understanding or the laws of nature, occult, paranormal, or more than what is natural or ordinary, unnaturally or extraordinarily great, abnormal, extraordinary. Obsolete uses include of, relating to, or dealing with metaphysics. As a noun, the term can mean a supernatural being, with a particularly strong history of employment in relation to entities from the mythologies of the indigenous peoples of the Americas. Epistemology and metaphysics The metaphysical considerations of the existence of the supernatural can be difficult to approach as an exercise in philosophy or theology because any dependencies on its antithesis, the natural, will ultimately have to be inverted or rejected. One complicating factor is that there is disagreement about the definition of natural and the limits of naturalism. Concepts in the supernatural domain are closely related to concepts in religious spirituality and occultism or spiritualism. For sometimes we use the word nature for that author of nature whom the schoolmen, harshly enough, call natura naturans, as when it is said that nature hath made man partly corporeal and partly immaterial. Sometimes we mean by the nature of a thing the essence, or that which the schoolmen scruple not to call the quiddity of a thing, namely, the attribute or attributes on whose score it is what it is, whether the thing be corporeal or not, as when we attempt to define the nature of an angle, or of a triangle, or of a fluid body, as such. Sometimes we take nature for an internal principle of motion, as when we say that a stone let fall in the air is by nature carried towards the center of the earth, and, on the contrary, that fire or flame does naturally move upwards toward heaven. Sometimes we understand by nature the established course of things, as when we say that nature makes the night succeed the day, nature hath made respiration necessary to the life of men. Sometimes we take nature for an aggregate of powers belonging to a body, especially a living one, as when physicians say that nature is strong or weak or spent, or that in such or such diseases nature left to herself will do the cure. Sometimes we take nature for the universe, or system of the corporeal works of God, as when it is said of a phoenix, or a chimera, that there is no such thing in nature, i.e. in the world and sometimes too, and that most commonly, we would express by nature a semi-deity or other strange kind of being, such as this discourse examines the notion of, and besides these more absolute exceptions, if I may so call them, of the word nature, it has divers others more relative, as nature is wont to be set or in opposition or contradistinction to other things, as when we say of a stone when it falls downwards that it does it by a natural motion, but that if it be thrown upwards its motion that way is violent. 
So chemists distinguish vitriol into natural and fictitious, or made by art, i.e. by the intervention of human power or skill, so it is said that water, kept suspended in a sucking pump, is not in its natural place, as that is which is stagnant in the well. We say also that wicked men are still in the state of nature, but the regenerate in a state of grace, that cures wrought by medicines are natural operations, but the miraculous ones wrought by Christ and his apostles were supernatural. The term, supernatural, is often used interchangeably with paranormal or preternatural, the latter typically limited to an adjective for describing abilities which appear to exceed what is possible within the boundaries of the laws of physics. Epistemologically, the relationship between the supernatural and the natural is indistinct in terms of natural phenomena that, ex hypothesi, violate the laws of nature, insofar as such laws are realistically accountable. Parapsychologists use the term psi to refer to an assumed unitary force underlying the phenomena they study. Psi is defined in the Journal of Parapsychology as, personal factors or processes in nature which transcend accepted laws. 1948 to 311 and which are non-physical in nature 1962 to 310 and it is used to cover both extrasensory perception ESP and awareness of or response to an external event or influence not apprehended by sensory means 1962 to 309 or inferred from sensory knowledge and psychokinesis PK the direct influence exerted on a physical system by a subject without any known intermediate energy or instrumentation." 1945–305. Many supporters of supernatural explanations believe that past, present, and future complexities and mysteries of the universe cannot be explained solely by naturalistic means and argue that it is reasonable to assume that a non-natural entity or entities resolve the unexplained. Views on the supernatural very for example it may be seen as indistinct from nature from this perspective some events occur according to the laws of nature and others occur according to a separate set of principles external to known nature for example in scholasticism it was believed that god was capable of performing any miracle so long as it didn't lead to a logical contradiction some religions posit immanent deities, however, and do not have a tradition analogous to the supernatural. Some believe that everything anyone experiences occurs by the will, occasionalism, in the mind, Neoplatonism, or as a part, nondualism, of a more fundamental divine reality, Platonism. Incorrect human attribution. In this view, all events have natural and only natural causes. They believe that human beings ascribe supernatural attributes to purely natural events, such as lightning, rainbows, floods, and the origin of life. History of the concept Dialogues from Neoplatonic philosophy in the 3rd century AD contributed the development of the concept the supernatural via Christian theology in later centuries. The term nature had existed since antiquity with Latin authors like Augustine using the word and its cognates at least 600 times in City of God. In the medieval period, nature had ten different meanings and natural had eleven different meanings. Peter Lombard, a medieval scholastic in the 12th century, asked about causes that are beyond nature, in that how there could be causes that were gods alone. He used the term prater naturam in his writings. In the scholastic period, Thomas Aquinas classified miracles into three categories, above nature, beyond nature, and against nature. In doing so, he sharpened the distinction between nature and miracles more than the early church fathers had done. As a result, he had created a dichotomy of sorts of the natural and supernatural. Though the phrase supranaturam was used since the 4th century AD, it was in the 1200s that Thomas Aquinas used the term supernaturalist. However, this term had to wait until the end of the medieval period for it become more popularly used. The discussions on nature from the scholastic period were diverse and unsettled with some postulating that even miracles are natural and that natural magic was a natural part of the world. See also Liberal naturalism Magical thinking Non-physical entity 
$1 million paranormal challenge, unclaimed prize for anyone demonstrating the supernatural Paranormal Preternatural Religious naturalism <laughs>